Lord, help us to uh, find that way into your very heart. My God, that we can be people that, that really just are so much in love with you. And Lord, that we would just see your mighty hand moving in our midst. We, we pray, Lord, for people to be born again, set free. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Uh, just going to have a, a quick session here right now. But I want to talk a little bit about uh, what I believe God is doing. And I've already shared a little bit about it. But I just want to start with this. Faith. How many people believe it's important to have faith? And, you know, we, we've got, again, you know, we were talking this morning about, uh, about we can learn how to how to uh, praise God. We can learn how to worship. We can, you know, lift up our hands, shut your eyes, stand on your head, whatever you do. But we learn different ways and different people have got different, different expressions of worship. And, uh, and it's the same with faith. Faith's a, what I believe is most misunderstood subject in the Bible. Because a lot of people are trying to prove they've got faith. You don't have to prove you've got faith. You know that? You've either got faith or you don't have faith. And faith is not something that you can prove, but it's something that God is looking for. So, so really, faith is an assurance. It's something inward. It's an inward conviction of something we can't see. It means being convinced of the reality of an unseen spiritual realm in which... God has met every one of your needs. It's really trusting God. It's really having that assurance that God is for us. And if God is for us, who can be against us? I believe that Jesus in his teaching is trying to separate in our thinking, man's thinking in the natural into the, of the natural human person to a spiritual human race that God has created. I, I am not, I'm a natural man, but there's a thing of the spirit. Jesus in his teaching is trying to separate man from the natural to the spiritual. The human race has become so carnally minded about the needs of the flesh, that the flesh dominates and controls us in every area of our life. And God, I believe, by, is, is trying to move us out of a natural thinking into a supernatural thinking, into the realm of the Spirit where God has met all of our needs, where God is in total control of my life. I don't want to be just naturally minded all the time and trying to assess and work out everything from the natural mind. The carnal mind, the needs of the flesh, has become the main priority in our life. And the spirit man is being neglected. We are body soul and spirit. We are not just a carnal man. We're not just a, a, a natural person. In the news the other night there, they were talking about a 14-year-old girl that was dying of cancer. And she had permission from the courts to have her body frozen so as that in 100 to 200 years from now, some scientists may be able to bring her back to life. And they've done certain things and goodness knows what, they've taken her blood out and other things. And now there she is. She actually died two days after they got the, she got the permission to do that. And this is where, where we're at. We're so carnally minded now that we're trying to become like God. I, just, I was just thinking of that young girl. I was thinking right now, because she passed away, she knows exactly where she is. She knows exactly what's going on. But I believe that the church, we've got to come to a place where I felt so sad for that young girl because if that young girl had have found somebody 
that could have told her the ways of truth and told her her needs of a Christ and what Jesus had done for her, that, that she could have received her salvation. And today she would be in the everlasting arms of a heavenly father, not hanging in suspension somewhere. In, well, a body is, but a body is finished. She don't, no longer needs this house. I tell you what, this old house has looked after me for a long time, amen, but I don't want it back, amen. <laughs> I want a new one, amen. Anybody else want a new one? I, I don't want this one <laughs> resurrected or goodness knows what. I want, I want a brand new one. Anybody else want a brand new, in for a new one? Well, let's see. And that young girl could have, could have just got born again, set free, and, and what an amazing thing that would have been. In 1 Thessalonians 5.23, it says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may, the, may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're a body, soul, and a spirit. Excuse me. I wasn't going to preach this message this morning, but... I just felt to do this. If the flesh man, see, we're body, soul, and spirit. If the flesh man is in control of your life, you will live to satisfy the flesh. I see so many Christians today that live as if this life is all that we have. They don't, Seek the kingdom. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. And so what I believe is God is, is getting inside of us that we become dissatisfied with the flesh life and that there's something on the inside of us says there's something that wants more out of life than just houses and cars and goodness knows what, amen? That somehow or other, the Spirit of God can get on the inside of us and reveal to us the, the real purpose and the real plan for humanity on this planet. And I believe that that's what God is doing. See, if the flesh man is in control of your life, you will live life to satisfy the flesh. Keeping up with the Joneses. Got Mr. Jones up the back there. God bless you, sir. <laughs> Things in this world become so important. I was driving to Brisbane not long ago in Nancy's little Micra. I overtook a Porsche. As you're pedaling by, boom, 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 and that, and you look at that Porsche, it's not, oh, I wish I had a Porsche. No, I'm thankful I didn't have to walk to Brisbane. <laughs> Amen? When you park it in the car park and you walk away, well, it's just another car, isn't it? Jesus said in Matthew 6.33, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. See, Jesus had just finished talking about food and clothing and everything like that. And I, and I believe that Jesus is wanting to get our minds off the things of this world and get our minds on, on, the, on the calling of God, get our minds on, on what God is doing in this land today that we live in. If this life is all we have, then yes, go for it. Live for today, you might as well, because tomorrow you're going to die. But the Word of God speaks about a place called heaven. <laughs> I've got, anybody got a vision of heaven? Have anybody got a, any idea, you know, what you think heaven's like? Heaven, what's heaven like? I've never had a vision. I, I really don't know what heaven's like, so I have to use my imagination. I've got, I've got, in heaven, I've got a massive big lake. And there on the bank, there's a little seat. And I've got my fishing rod. 
and I throw my rod out and bang, there's a metre and a half barra. <laughs> and oh, we, you know. And then when, when I pull him in, he shakes my hand and says, see you tomorrow, Neil. <laughs> I've got, I've got a dream of, of, a, of a hamburger tree. <laughs> There's a vanilla slice tree. You just go and take one. Mangoes and all those sort of things. But you know what? My little brain, pea brain, has got nothing compared to what God has prepared for those who love Him. Amen. It's got, look, the, you know what? Guess what? I'm not going to be disappointed if there's not a Barramundi Lake. <laughs> there's going to be something much better. Amen. I'm not going to be disappointed if the, in, in my thinking because I'm just going to be so overwhelmed. By the, by the beauty and the, and the majesty and the, and the awesomeness. Friend, I've, I've had the privilege, and many, I know you have as well, of being in that place where, where you where in worship or in praise or whatever it might be, just that, that moment of time when, when you sense the presence of God all over your life. Can you imagine living in that? The joy. A place where there's no more crying, where there's no more, where there's no more sadness, where there's no more wars, where there's no more this, but there's joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. A place where the lion lays down with the lamb. Nancy longs, longs to, to, to go on the grassy banks where it is and go and sit beside a lion. Amen. There's got to have a lot of work's got to be done in Nancy before that can happen. (laughs) I remember walking into our house when we lived in America with a little bunny in my hand, and that nearly put her into orbit. (laughs) Hmm? Didn't look like a bunny, she thought it was a rat. Word of God speaks about a heaven. It speaks about a place. But friend, here we are on church, church, on this earth now. We're living in this this place down here. But I believe that God wants a church that understands and, and experiences His presence, experiences His power, experiences His His anointing. As I was sharing this morning, Lorraine that was here, is it Lorraine? Got it right this time. Lorraine that was here from, from being, uh, being on that, uh, with, with that condition in her body, that sickness in her body, in, a, in an instant of, of time, in a moment of time, just, just one touch from Jesus Christ and totally delivered. I believe that God wants to deliver the church. But friend, if we're so earthly bound, it's like God is trying with a lever, trying to lift us away and and break the strongholds of the flesh and the strongholds of the natural to take us into a supernatural realm of His Spirit because it's made available. It is already there, amen. God doesn't have to try to make, it's already there for us to go into. And I was so thrilled uh, last Sunday, uh, the Sunday week as David was there and I know, I've known David and Hazel now for some 40 odd years, might be more. And, and, and I know that David's not one that just runs off with every little tangent. If you know him, you know that he's a man that's very, very solid and very, very on track and very, very careful what he says and he wouldn't say anything unless it was real to him. But to be able to, what I liken it to is that David told me, he said at six o'clock as we began to sing the songs, he shut his eyes and he never opened them again until it was seven o'clock. So I believe that, that as God was speaking to him, it's like in, in, a, in, a, in a kind of a, I want to be careful saying this, like a trance. Or is in a place, <laughs> in a place where, where God had his total, full attention, Amen. 
And I believe that's where God wants to take us. He wants to take us to a place, a place in Him where He can have His way, where we're not conscious of, of natural. And one of the things I find, and please, I am just as guilty as anybody else as a, as a leader, as a pastor. I'm conscious of people. But I believe what God wants me to be is God conscious and let Him look after the people. Is that okay? Because I believe that there's got to come, I honestly believe we're going to catch these thermals that we've been talking about. I believe God wants to take us into a realm of the Spirit where we see healings and deliverances. When God took the children of Israel out, He took them into something. So He wanted to take them into something so dynamic and powerful. But when they came out, there was not one weak or sick among them. And I believe that that's where God wants us to be, is where we actually become receivers, where, where, where we become partakers of the divine health that God wants us to live in. Do you believe that? I do not believe that arthritis is our portion. I believe that healing is our portion. I do not believe that God wants any to be weak or sick among us. But there's got to come a, a breaking away, a challenge. There's got to come a separation where, yes, we are of this, we live in this world, but we're not of it. This is not my home. This is not my, this is not my whatever it is. Two very, very, the two of the wealthiest men in the world passed away within a couple of weeks of each other. And there was a great rumor about the amount of wealth that they'd accumulated over the years and the way that they'd had all this money. And there's people there that were discussing, how much money did they leave? How much money did they, you know? And one man stood up and said, they left the lot. You see, we can't take our wealth. We can't take all these things. You won't take your Porsche to, to heaven, you know what I mean? You won't need a Porsche in heaven. How are you going to get around? I got, no, I won't go there. <laughs> but I believe it's going to be an amazing place. I believe that, that it is and that we've got to get ready. A place called heaven where the lion lays down with the lamb. A place where there's no more crying or pain. But there's peace. We're a, we're a spirit people. We've got to understand that. There was a, I might get this story wrong. But I know it's a true story, but I'm going to do it my way. There's a group of people, I believe that they left England by ship to go out and find new land and, and uh, make a colony. The ships brought them to this land where they set them off. They, put the, they had food, they had building materials, they had everything that they needed to uh, last for two years plus. Their job was to establish a colony and in two or three years' time, whatever it was, they were going to come back with their ships with other people and, and continue to colonize it this area. These farmers, as they went out there and they, they started to uh, dig up the land, they started to plant, they started to build, they started to do what they were supposed to do. But in the midst of doing what they were doing, as they were digging up the ground, they found gold. And these people, the flesh, got so involved with what they were doing. This is a true story. that they lost their purpose. Church, if we lose our purpose, we will be doomed as well. These people lost their purpose and the gold rush, the gold fever, the, the wealth the, and everything that had carried. Friend, you can gain this whole world and lose your soul. We've lost everything. And these people, as they started to dig, they found this gold. 
And then two or three years later, when the ships came back to bring the, the next group of people, there was not one person alive in that colony. But they found bags of gold, bags and bags of gold. What happened was that they began just to allow the gold thing to get inside them. And instead of planting food, they ate what they had. Then they ate their seed until they had nothing left. And they starved to death. Friend, I believe that the church can starve to death. We need a fresh revelation of the Word of God. Amen. We need a fresh outpouring of the Spirit of God. You can't make it happen. But as I said the other week, we can make room for it to happen. We can allow the hunger that is being created on the inside of us, we can nourish it. Amen. We can, we can go after it. We can, we, can, we can linger in His presence. We can just, there this, this morning, I was determined just to allow, and I'm listening to the piano playing, tinkle, tinkle, tinkle up the end there. Did you hear the tinkle, tinkle? I love the tinkle at the end. Hear the guitars playing, the, the, different, uh, the different sounds coming out, the musicians. I don't know about you, but that's what I want. Anybody else want that? I'm going to ask, if that's what you want, will you stand to your feet? <laughs> and we're going to blow that chauffeur again. If that's what you want, let's stand to our feet. Let's believe God. I believe that God is going to move by His Spirit. I believe that I don't want to starve to death knowing that I've got everything that I need to take us to the victory of Christ, to take us wherever God wants to take us. Amen. Father God, have your way. Have your way, my God. Have your way. But I want to open myself to the realm of the Spirit. Is that okay? Come on, blow that thing before we sing. It's begun, hallelujah. It's begun. Begun, hallelujah. The wind is blowing again, hallelujah. Just like the day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing again. Blow that thing, my brother. Let the healing power flow through this body in Jesus. Healing power in Jesus' name flow through this body. Let the healing anointing flow in Jesus' name. Let the power of God come into this place. Be thou healed in Jesus' name.